videos on Romans 1, uh, part 1 and part 2. The, the, the first one deals with verse 26, mostly about lesbians, and the second one deals with just homosexuality in general. I encourage you to watch those videos, and I also encourage you to um, go to the, my, my website, my blog site, and so you can get the entire text of this because when you're limited to 10 minutes and you're talking about something as crucial as the GLBT community and society and church, 10 minutes is just not a fair amount of time. And I don't want to do it in one part and one in part two because things get lost. So I want to read, I want to read Romans 1, 20, well, Actually, I'm just going to start talking about it. You know, if you're concerned about it, you know what Romans 1, through 32 says. But my take on it is, it starts in verse 18. And what it's saying is Paul's saying, and he's writing to the Romans, and he's saying, and I've got a total explanation of the history there. This is the bottom line. He's writing to them, and he's saying, you used to know God. You used to have a relationship with Jesus, and now you have, you have turned your back on him. And here's the consequences to turning your back on him. And the consequences are that I'm going to let you fall into greater destruction, and I'm also now going to turn my back on you, which is that is the point of what I want to say in this video. Because this is to people that have uttered the words of uh, the threats of Romans 1, 26 through 28 and anybody. There's a horrible threat within there, and I hope you hear the threat to yourselves. Because this is how I would re rewrite it, and please, I know you're, some of you are going to struggle with my rewrite of Romans 126, but through 18 through 32. Please, do me the favor, do yourself the favor of going to the website and reading um, a good uh, analysis of those, because when you just listen to yourself and you don't look at another viewpoint, I, even God calls you a fool in Proverbs. Don't be a fool. So here's my rewrite of it. Here's my s simple look at Romans 18, 32. Romans 1, 18 through 32. It says, God's anger is being shown to those who once knew the truth and experienced him. These people who once knew God, but their hearts turned from him and they returned to their old ways and to pagan worship. Because of this, God allowed them to continue in their idol worship, sometimes even using their bodies in sexual worship to their gods, and their rejection of God will bring an additional destructive sin and behaviors that will never be, that never they ever, never even knew before, and God will let them go forever. So, so we as a church have told the GLBT community, and the ones that I'm very concerned about are the youth that are coming up through the church that are realizing they're gay and lesbian, and they've had a relationship with God, they've met a profession of faith in Him, and then we cause them to turn from Him. And here, here's the deal. They once knew Him, and now they're turning from Him because we're asking them to choose between their orientation and their faith in God. Well, they can't change their orientation. So they're choosing between what they cannot change and what they can change. So they're choosing to walk away. So we are dooming an entire group of people that once made a profession of him and now turn from him and even say that they hate him. And the reason they hate him, they hate Jesus and they hate God is because of what we've done, what we've said to them. And when they turn from him, it's biblical. When you turn from God after having known him, he'll turn you over to worse sins and worse life. And then we look at the gay and lesbian community, and we wonder why they're so bad, the ones that aren't in the church, why they're so promiscuous and they're so bad. Well, God's let them go to themselves because they've turned their backs on him. And the reason they've turned their backs on him is because we've forced them to make, an, uh, we've forced them to make a choice. So... Um, when you, I heard a story recently. I talked to a young girl whose dad said to her, actually said this to her, it would have been better had your mother had an abortion than to have a lesbian child. Now, I don't know how this girl is staying in relationship with a church and with 
Jesus. It shocks me sometimes that my my GLBT friends can stay within the church and can stay in relationship with him after what the straight community and the traditional church does to them. The amount of wooing the Holy Spirit must be doing to them, it's just incredible. And we generally are making them make a choice. The Barna Institute has done some research and 68% of the gay community says a relationship with God is very important to them and 58% say uh, a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is very important in their lives too. And where are they? They're not in the churches. And they're not in the churches because we've told them they have to make a choice between their orientation and God. So a lot of them are, are making that choice. So the consequence of Romans 1, 18 through 32, you once knew him and you turn your back on him and he's going to let you go. We the church, the straight church, is going to be guilty for pushing these people, these precious children of God, away from him. And some of them do stay, and really, <laughs> I'm going to do it. I applaud you. I don't know how, how you endure it sometimes. And I've got lots of you that are my friends, and I'm amazed by you, and I'm amazed by the depth of your, um, of your faith, and I'm amazed by the depth of your forgiveness towards the church. But the bulk, the bulk do walk away, and they declare that they do not love God. They indeed hate him. So I hope that uh, you consider just reading those, those, um, those posts that I did on Romans 18, Romans 1, 18 through 32. And I hope that if you've uttered those words to GLBT people and have actually forced them out of your churches or out of your families, I hope you are convicted to, and read the article, convicted to get down on your knees and weep before God that you're responsible for uh, turning people from him. And if you indeed turned a child from from God, you know what it says in Matthew 18, it would have been better that you had a millstone put around your neck and drowned, or it would have been better that you were never born, than you would force one of these children to go away from him or cause one of them to sin. And that's, that's, you know, it's just got to be said, that's blood that's on the head of the church for doing this to the GLBT community. These are just my opinions, but this is what I see in scripture. GLBT youth, eight times more suicides within that population, six times more depression, four times more substance abuse. And it's not because they're gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. It's because of the rejection that they suffer within society and their homes. Um, on some city streets, up to 40% of the youth on those city streets are GLBT. And they're only 5 to 10% of the population. I mean, what's going on here? We're so rejecting them out of their homes that they're, they're walking the streets too. And we're going to be guilty of that one. Um, is reparative therapy a good? I mean, can you go to Exodus? Can you go to these other ones? Well, I hear stories of success. My opinion is... Very rarely there is some kind of sexual distortion with sexual abuse at youth, and you heal that uh, pain within somebody, but overwhelmingly, and I mean hugely overwhelmingly, it is not that as an issue. They are born gay. Can you pray the gay away? No. Can, and this is what those reparative therapies think. They say homosexuality... Heterosexuality is God's intent for humanity, and thus homosexuality is out of God's will. Heter homosexuality can be broken by breaking the sin of the, the breaking the sin in it of it in a person's life, and reorientation is possible. It's not. Stop banking on that. Uh, default to what we do know. Love people. Love them back into the church. Love them to God. It is never your job to be the Holy Spirit Junior. Just love people. That's all he ever says is just love them. Let God deal with it. If he wants to change their orientation, he's big enough he can change their orientation. But I'm encouraging you, stop using these verses against the gay community. Please read my blog post at canyonwalkerconnections.com. I am so aware that this is not enough, but go there and check it out. And I do appreciate you listening to this teaser, canyonwalkerconnections.com. Thank you.